During a span of eight months last year, I embarked on a road trip across the continent, living out of my trusty RV. This story unfolds in the first month of my journey. I had parked just beyond the borders of Alaska, nestled in the Yukon forest, about a mile off the main road. Summer had melted most of the snow, revealing breathtaking vistas. For nearly a week, I'd immersed myself in this serene haven, surrounded by trees but not shielded from the intermittent rain. I spent hours reading, gazing out of the windows, or simply letting my thoughts wander. The ambience was both tranquil and revitalizing. Then one day while preparing lunch, a peculiar sound punctuated the pattering rain. I paused, ears tuned, suspecting it might be a bear, enticed by the aroma of my meal. Yet, as the steps drew nearer, they morphed into distinctly human footfalls. Approaching, they grew uncomfortably close, prompting a surge of apprehension. Tentatively, I pulled back the curtains, catching sight of a man's back as he veered into the woods. The downpour obscured my view, but it was evident he wasn't a fellow camper or hiker, lacking the gear one would expect. It struck me as odd. What was he doing in this remote area, off a barely frequented road? Unless, by some strange chance, he'd unwittingly stumbled upon me. Throughout the remainder of the day, I intermittently checked, but encountered nothing further of note. As night cloaked the surroundings, the rain intensified, accompanied by flashes of lightning. I ensured the RV was securely sealed, anxious about weathering such a storm without the usual shelter of a conventional parking lot. I stayed awake longer than usual, monitoring the integrity of the RV. It was well into the night when I heard footsteps drawing near. The rain muffled them, so they seemed to appear out of nowhere, already dangerously close. They advanced right up to the door, then fell silent. I waited, fixated on the door, but there were no further sounds. Stealthily, I approached the door, peering through the curtain. No one stood there. I scanned the trees, checked the other windows, but it was as if the specter had never existed. I attributed it to exhaustion and eventually succumbed to sleep, suppressing any lingering unease. Morning brought a return to my usual routine. The rain had subsided, granting me the chance to venture outside. As I swung open the door, a strange sight greeted me. Footprints, exactly where the nocturnal intruder had drawn near. Realization washed over me, dispelling any notion that I'd imagined it all. My complexion turned pallid. Beside the footprints lay trampled grass, leading right under the bed of the RV. Panic surged, and without a second thought, I grabbed my keys, forsaking any preparations. As the door slammed shut, I caught a glimpse of a figure sprawled in the grass, right where my RV had been parked. I sped away, leaving the unsettling scene behind. How they'd located me, and what their intentions were remains a mystery. If I were to hazard a guess, they must have tracked me from the main road, likely shadowing my every move during the week I'd spent there. I consider myself incredibly fortunate as an incident out there would have surely spelled my disappearance. As the rain continued to pour outside, its rhythmic drumming against the roof became the soundtrack to my solitary vigil. The warehouse, housing a trove of valuable tech, stood in quiet repose. It was my duty to keep watch through the night, a task I'd grown accustomed to, despite its eerie undertones. The evening began like any other, with the departing shift workers passing me by. They left, leaving the sprawling warehouse under my care from 10.30 p.m. to 6 a.m. The hum of the security cameras and the occasional creaking of the building were the only company I had. Around two hours in, I decided to take a break from my vigilant gaze at the camera feed. Stretching my legs, I embarked on a routine security check. The storage area, nestled at the far end of the warehouse, held its usual stillness. With each step, the ambient noises faded, replaced by the steady drumming of rain against the roof. As I made my way back, a faint beeping pierced the silence. The source was the security room. A latch sensor on the back door signaled an attempted entry. My heart quickened, and I hastened my steps to the back, hoping for a technical glitch or 
perhaps, a rain-induced anomaly. With the alarm temporarily disabled, I cautiously opened the door, revealing the alleyway shrouded in a curtain of rain. No signs of intrusion were evident, and the sensor appeared undisturbed. Satisfied that all was well, I reactivated the alarm and returned to the security office. The paperwork awaited, and I settled into my chair, pen poised over the forms. Just as the ink met paper, a sharp thud reverberated through the building, jolting me from my focus. I stood, straining to discern the origin of the sound, but was met with silence, save for the rain's relentless cadence. Moving carefully, I traversed the warehouse, scanning shelves for any disturbances. As I neared the front, the rain's patter grew louder, cocooning me in its auditory embrace. Rounding the corner, I came to a sudden halt. The front door yawned wide, waterlogged footprints bearing witness to an unwelcome visitor. Panic surge, coursing through my veins. With haste, I retraced my steps to the security room, bolting the door behind me. Fingers flying, I pressed the emergency button, summoning the police to my aid. Within moments, the building was filled with the echo of footsteps as law enforcement officers fanned out, their presence offering a palpable reassurance. With bated breath, I waited, the silence now punctuated by the muffled thuds of their search. Minutes stretched into an eternity, until finally they returned, an apprehended figure in tow. The man, clad in cuffs, had been discovered amidst the stacks of boxes, a hammer clutched in his trembling hands. As he passed, his gaze bore into mine, a chilling reminder of the peril that had lurked. In the ensuing days, the police would report that the intruder had been in the throes of heavy drug influence, providing no rational explanation for his actions. What had driven him to conceal himself behind those boxes, armed with a hammer, remained a haunting enigma. Thankfully, he now resided behind bars, his threat neutralized. Yet even now, on rainy nights, an undercurrent of unease lingers, a lingering reminder of that fateful evening and the close call that could have been so much worse. It was a weekend night, and my parents were away for a few days, so I decided to have my friend Matthew over for a sleepover. We were both 14, and the idea of a parent-free sleepover was too enticing to resist. Matthew arrived around 8, braving the relentless storm that had set in earlier in the day. By the time he stepped inside, he was drenched. It turned out we hadn't quite realized the severity of the downpour. After a quick change into dry clothes, we wasted no time and fired up the Xbox. The hours flew by as we immersed ourselves in various games, with no intention of stopping anytime soon. At one point, we even considered going the distance and gaming straight through to morning. Then, out of the blue, we were jolted by a loud knock at the back door. It reverberated through the house, sharp and insistent. Matthew and I exchanged puzzled glances, both of us equally baffled by who it could be and why they would be at the back door. We remained rooted in the living room, immobilized, not wanting the unexpected visitor to catch sight of us. Through the cacophony of rain, a man's voice pierced through, pleading for help. Skepticism and fear held us back from revealing ourselves. We were apprehensive about calling the police without knowing who it was or why they were there. A strange notion nagged at us, the fear of facing severe consequences if it turned out to be a false alarm. After a hushed conversation, we decided that one of us should stealthily loop around through the kitchen to catch a glimpse of the visitor without being seen. The kitchen, tucked away on the far side, provided a strategic vantage point. Taking on the task, I made my way over, cautiously peeking my head around the corner. Through the fog, darkness, and rain, I discerned a looming figure right by the door. Yet details eluded me. His features remained shrouded, an enigma. When I returned to Matthew and relayed what I'd seen, the knocking had ceased, and the calls for help had fallen silent. For the next ten minutes, we listened keenly, straining for any sign of his presence. But then, as abruptly as it had begun, it was over. We chalked it up to a misunderstanding, though unease still simmered beneath the surface. Deciding to end our gaming session, 
we opted for some TV before bed. As I turned to grab the remote, I was met with a horrifying sight. A pair of eyes, wide and crazed, bore into mine through the window. His face, obscured by rain-soaked hair, pressed against the glass. Panic coursed through me. Matthew screamed and bolted for the other side of the house, and I followed suit. We heard a series of thuds by the window, as though he were trying to force it open before the silence descended. Matthew urgently called his parents, who promptly contacted the police. By the time they arrived, it was all over. They did find muddy shoe prints outside, providing a shred of validation for our harrowing experience. To this day, the memory of that night sends shivers down my spine. That man, lurking outside the window, watching us for nearly 30 minutes, remains a chilling reminder of the darkness that could have befallen us. The intruder was never identified, and mercifully, he never returned. What might have transpired had we ventured to his aid is a terrifying thought. I can only hope that no one else falls prey to his sinister intentions or makes the same mistakes that could have cost us our lives. Thank you for watching Whispering Tales TV. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join our community of fellow thrill seekers. Get ready for spine-tingling stories that will keep you up at night. Let the whispering tales begin.